Good afternoon. My name is Mike Lackey. I'm with the firm of LCCX. We're a commissioning firm from San Antonio, Texas. Our program today is ensuring high-performing pre-engineered metal buildings through rigorous building and closure testing. And I'm here with the owner of the project. Uh, hello, I'm Kathleen Crabb. I'm a senior architect with the city of San Antonio. As we mentioned, we are here to, uh, to demonstrate or, or to present a case study uh, on uh, how even a, a humble building like a pre-engineered metal building can be made to perform uh, like a, a high performance building through the rigorous application of building enclosure testing. So this is an actual case study. We have documentation of the results. Uh, we're looking forward to presenting that. So Kathleen. The city of San Antonio has a voluntary program beyond code to ensure high performance of even utilitarian structures. The conditioned areas on the five pre-engineered pre metal buildings on two campuses were pressure tested to determine if performance was equivalent to a conventional structure. After building enclosure commissioning and air barrier testing, the buildings far exceeded minimum air barrier air leakage requirements, performing nearly at ASHRAE tight building standards, providing significant energy savings well into the future. This is the AIA education disclaimer. We have to show it to you. We will, there will be certificates of completion for non-AIA members upon request, and all AIA members will have their records sent to the AIA. The AIA learning objectives. Learn how the quality control process of building and closure commissioning produces high performance buildings. Understand how low tech buildings can be made to perform like high performance buildings. Understand how a performance testing expectation drives overall building quality. And learn the critical steps to obtaining high performance building envelopes. Okay, thank you. Uh, as we delve into this, let's just get a little bit of background about uh, the codes that uh, reference building and closure commissioning. Uh, we'll be talking about these. One is NIBS 3-2012. It's since been updated to, with an ASTM standard. ASHRAE Guideline 0, which has also been updated by a newer standard. ASTM E779 and IECC 2015, which we're going to refer to throughout uh, this uh, presentation, but because that's the uh, that's the code under which these uh, uh, projects were designed and permitted. However, now the IECC 2018 has been uh, accepted by by many uh, jurisdictions. And then finally, ComCheck. Uh, NIBS, uh, which stands for National Institute of Building Science, uh, NIBS 3, which is published in 2012, uh, establishes the, the guidelines for building and closure commissioning. Uh, BECX is a process that begins with the establishment of the OPR and endeavors to ensure the exterior enclosure meets or exceeds the expectations of the owner. A fundamental understanding of ASHRAE Guideline 0 and NEBS 3 is recommended for optimal use and application of this uh, practice. Now, as I mentioned before, that NEBS has been, uh, NEBS 3 has been updated. Uh, both both NIB 3 and, guide, and Guideline 0 are very key in, in practical uh, starting points. Uh, there, the essence of these two documents has been incorporated in, in, in the uh, later versions. So uh, you'll see reference to NIBS 3 and Guideline 0 and many, stand, many specifications and, and OPRs. 
as I mentioned, uh, the uh, NIBS 3 is no, uh, which is, I should have mentioned, NIBS, National Institute for Building Science, is no longer uh, maintaining this and has turned the, uh, the upgrading and care and management of this to uh, ASTM. So that's, that's just a, uh, a copy of the, uh, of the ASTM document. Uh, ASTM E779, the standard test method for determining air leakage by fan pressurization. Uh, obviously, we've got the fans shown there in the picture, and uh, that, is, that is how we determine, uh, uh, in this case, it was whole building uh, air leakage testing. And uh, you can see that the, the two fans, and then in the middle is a fan array uh, to control multiple fans. In uh, all of our tests, we used uh, two fans. We did not uh, have to go to three. Uh, IECC 2015. Uh, now, it does require building pressurization testing if the, uh, the uh, design is not in the, with the prescriptive uh, methods, which is either the, the materials or the assembly provisions in the contract. Uh, other than that, it would require uh, the enclosure testing. And I'll, I'll uh, point you down to the uh, circle on the right side. The building thermal envelope with a testing air leakage rate of not greater than 0.4 CFM, and that is square foot of building enclosure area, complies with the air leakage requirements. The IECC uh, key elements that address this, uh, that's in chapter C402, uh, uh, subparagraph 5. It talks about the testing procedure, which is the 0.4 CFM per square foot. And it also talks about the uh, 402.5.1, the air barrier. The continuous air barrier shall be provided throughout the building thermal envelope. The air barrier shall be permitted to be located on the inside or outside of the envelope. So again, this is what our test is to assure the uh, 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 integrity of this uh, continuous air barrier. Uh, it's probably easier to, to draw it uh, on a drawing, if you will. Uh, the, prac the, the trick is, uh, is actually making sure that that is uh, constructed in that manner. And then finally, the ComCheck software. This is a ComCheck of one of the, the various buildings. This is the traffic building at the Northwest Service Center. And uh, according to the de design prescription, uh, this, this building envelope passes. Uh, as Kathleen mentioned earlier, the city of San Antonio has adopted a, uh, a voluntary uh, standard to comply with this uh, uh, with, with the, the intent and the spirit of, of the IECC 25. It, uh, the building's passed uh, based on the comm check, so the, the whole building air barrier test was not necessary, but as a, uh, as a measure of the performance, uh, the city of San Antonio elected to, to conduct this test. These are the two projects that were commissioned for building envelope. The first, the top one was the Northwest Service Center and the bottom is the Southeast Service Center. They were very similar in the fact that both sites had an administration building that was fully, that was fully um, conditioned space. Both sites had a vehicle maintenance building where a small portion was conditioned space. And at the Northwest Service Center, we had a third building that was half conditioned space and half warehouse. 
here is an overview of the Northwest Service Center. And as you can see, we had the traffic building, which was half warehouse, half conditioned space, the administration building that was completely conditioned space and the vehicle maintenance building, which was partially conditioned space and the rest of it were vehicle maintenance space. There were a number of other buildings on the site, but none of the other buildings such as the material storage or in the far right corner, the fuel islands were buildings that were conditioned. Here are uh, some pictures of both the um, of the administration building, the traffic warehouse, and the vehicle maintenance building. So you can get an idea of how these were very utilitarian buildings. The Southeast Service Center had the two uh, areas with conditioned space, the administration building on the front and the vehicle maintenance building in the back. In, the vehicle maintenance building, we had two departments with bays on either side. So the conditioned area was slightly larger on this site. Next. And here are some photographs of the administration building and the vehicle maintenance building. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, so what is building and closure commissioning? We've been using that term, uh, but let, let me just refresh uh, for those of you who are not commissioning providers, uh, that uh, the ASHRAE Guideline Zero sets out several requirements uh, for uh, commissioning. One is to develop a commissioning plan as to how the project would be commissioned. Uh, in it, we would define the roles and responsibilities of each of the team members. We would review the owner's project requirements and the basis of design uh, to understand what the owner's expectations are. We would define the commissioning requirements uh, by specifications, uh, that could, the commissioning specifications. Uh, we would review designs and provide feedback at the DD and CD stages. We perform submittal reviews to verify the compliance with the OPR. Uh, we conduct observations and testing to verify the system performance in the field. And then we would document the construction uh, observations with a checklist and reports. Uh, just a quick note down at the bottom, I'll refer to this later, but ASHRAE 90.1, uh, it defines a tight building as 0.1 CFM per square foot. That's, a, that's as opposed to the uh, 0.4 CFM that IECC uh, uh, requires. Anyway, I will use that term later. I just put this slide in here because I was talking about ASHRAE. Um, key elements of the enclosure commissioning process. Uh, again, first of all, owner's project requirements. In this case, to, to be able to pass the IECC 2015, or excuse me, to, to be able to pass the whole building air barrier test. Uh, design reviews at the various stages, submittal reviews at the various stages. Uh, Pre-construction conferences with the various uh, specialty trade contractors, whether they be waterproofing, roofing, uh, glazing, uh, uh, caulking and sealants, uh, to discuss how it was going to be applied in the field and, and what the challenges might be and the pitfalls to avoid. Uh, we also had uh, uh, Key to this was a mock-up review wherein each of the trades uh, uh, demonstrated how they were going to apply uh, the, the uh, materials in the field, and uh, which would become a guideline for uh, checking uh, of the actual construction against as a standard. Uh, field observations, and then finally field verification and testing. And the whole building air uh, 
barrier pressurization. Uh, that was our functional performance test for this project. I think one of the uh, key aspects here is attention to detail. And uh, at, uh, at each stage of the construction, uh, the whole design team would, the whole team, commissioning team, whether it's designers or contractors, general contractors or trade contractors would walk the project. And, oh yes, and I forgot the owner too. Uh, would walk the project and I think we all learned quite a bit as we went through on this project. The, uh, the architect uh, was uh, adapting details that he felt were not uh, 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 in the in the guidance of a uh, of a of a building uh, uh, adequacy of the air barrier, uh, the contractor noticed uh, uh, areas which might be a cause for air leaks in the future, and uh, I'd like to think that we as commissioning agents uh, discuss these aspects with with all parties of the design team, in, yes. including the owner. Uh, then uh, what is the this performance test we have, this whole building pressurization test? Uh, again, I, I had mentioned earlier about ASTM E779, uh, the standard test method for determining air leakage rates by fan pressurization. I, I've showed you a couple of pictures of the fans. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. Um, Air barrier, air tightness testing is a process in which the building envelope is tested to uh, quantify the, the air tightness. And this is by a, a leakage rate. And that leakage rate is defined in the IECC 2015. Uh, this, is, this test measures the air leakage through, uh, through the envelope under controlled pressurization and depressurizations. Uh, again, as we said, the building test is not a mandatory uh, a test prescribed in the building codes, but a performance-based option that many designers are requiring and owners. Uh, the only, uh, requ uh, only requirements for whole building testing in this are in the state of Washington, the United States General Services Administration, and the United States Army Corps of Engineer projects. Uh, I don't want to get too much in the statistics because I certainly don't understand them. The software of the uh, air builder uh, air pressurization test is, is recorded by a series of pressurizations and depressurizations. We will pressurize the building 10 different times and uh, uh, measure the leakage rate uh, at each time. We will depressurize the building 10 different times and record those leakage rates. You can see that illustrated by the, the, the blue and the red. And uh, statistically, it will, it will develop a line and say this is your average, uh, mean average over 10 different uh, particular tests. And then the, the, uh, the uh, pressurizations and the depressurizations are average to, to get the final number. Here are some actual test results from one of the buildings at the Northwest Service Center. This was the Traffic uh, Administration Building. Uh, this, so this building was, was tested in June of 2018. And, uh, uh, the results of the test are, are as follows. Uh, we, we took a deep pressurization, depressurization. We added the, the, the full program adds the two together. It takes the average. So we had 1.88 on uh, pressurization, 0 0.1302 on depressurization. So we add those together, average it. It comes out to 0.159 of CFM per square foot. So the, the airflow, the, the, the leakage airflow was 8,668 uh, cubic feet per minute. 
Now that does seem like a lot of air, but it's a pretty good sized building and uh, it's based on the, the uh, cubic feet per minute, uh, uh, or excuse me, the cubic feet of volume within the building. We have an air change rate of 1.39 uh, per hour, so that the entire building in, in one hour will exhaust itself uh, uh, 1.39 uh, times. So that, that is a pretty low leakage rate. The IECC allowed leakage rate is 0.4, and our flow uh, per, per or leakage, if you will, per unit of area at 75 uh, Pascals was only 0.16. Uh, that that was one of our, our better performers. Put the the table up here so you can see just just where we came out. So the the traffic building was probably our well one of our better performance at the the Trafficville Northwest Service Center. We were 0.159 or 0.16. CFM per square foot versus the standard of 0.4. So we were we we achieved 40% of the standard. Uh, the the probably the star performer of the serve the Southeast Service Center was 0.117 CFM per square foot uh, versus 0.4. We were 29% of the uh, of the standard. Uh, and I, I mentioned in my presentation that, that this is getting very close to the ASHRAE uh, tight building uh, standard. So we were very pleased and very proud of, of this result. I'm going to let Kathleen uh, talk from the owner's perspective about this. Well, the main thing is that the owner needs to be committed to building enclosure commissioning. If the owner isn't committed and driving the whole project, then it's very hard to ensure that the designers and the contractors are also equally committed. The owner needs to engage a qualified enclosure commissioning provider early in the design phase. They need, the reason why they need to be involved during the design phase is to review the details of the building enclosure, to assure that when we get out into the field and it's actually being constructed, that the details are appropriate. Um, we need to, you need to make your building enclosure commissioning provider, an integral part of the design team. You need to inform both your design team and the contractor that an air leakage test will be performed at the end of the project. If not, they may slack off a little in some of the details or some of the installations. But if they know you're going to be doing this test, they will also be a lot more precise in what they do. Um, in the commissioning, the building envelope commissioning provider also needs to be an integral part of the construction phase. They need to come out and attend the construction meetings Throughout the process, they need to make uh, site observations and write up reports of any deficiencies they see so that they can be corrected before they start to cover up things in the uh, construction process. And you need to assure that the whole team is open to your commissioning agent's concerns during construction and issues get resolved. By doing this, even with very utilitarian buildings such as the Northwest and Southeast Service Center projects, you will assure passing and exceeding 
the requirements for air leakage. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, and I must say it was a real pleasure and a privilege working with the city of San Antonio on this. Uh, Kathleen uh, was very supportive of us and uh, uh, made sure that our comments were, were noted and uh, that we were treated as a uh, equal seat at the table with, with all the other professionals. So uh, it was a very rewarding process. Uh, questions? Since we're doing this remotely uh, and pre-recorded, uh, perhaps uh, there's going to be an opportunity for uh, uh, some sort of a chat type session to to answer questions if you have them. Uh, I'm sure the the uh, administrators of the of the program can get those to us, and we can get those answered for you.